strong B in there. Uh, and then I will spend just a little bit of time sealing those two pieces together. Um, I've got, I'm, and here I am on the wrong side of the wheel. Um, my thumbnail is, is the primary tool for sealing these down, so I'm really working the clay down well. What doing this, this way also gives you, and you know, this, this matters to me, is that I all of a sudden have a real nice, big, fat, thick um, rim. And I like, I like the strong line. This is that, I don't know. When you have semesters of architectural history and you have to draw Ionic, Doric, and Corinthian columns from memory on your examinations, you kind of incorporate these things into your pots. Um, and so um, I remember one time, first time I ever met Dave Shainer, in fact, he looked at my pots and he said, they have such structure. And I didn't know what he meant, but um, I need to have that foundation. I need to have those things in my pieces. I seldom let, let a pot just drift down into the surface it's on. So, um, and we're working on the proper side of the pot again. nice big thickness and I'm going to be able to, and this is just like pulling uh, a handle, I'm going to take some of that thickness and I'm going to pull it upward. And one of the things, when if you try to do this, the, the big mistake is letting your fingers actually pass all the way through the clay. If you notice, I'm always stopping short of of the actual edge or the rim. And I will try to manipulate as much clay up vertically as I possibly can. And, and that, that, this is the benefit you get from, from having created that neck upside down. create a throat to basically in the neck of the pot to, to guide the, the liquid to the spout. And so I'm going to be taking this finger on the outside, two fingers on the inside. I'm going to pick it up right about here and I am going to just simply draw that line and draw 
that line. And I like this for a couple of reasons. One is it does encourage the, the liquid toward the spout. The other part of making that a nice strong line is that the pitcher handle is going to be this real strong vertical on this side. Um. And I think then that the um, in the end. Don't look so good about what I was doing. Um, anyway, it helps balance out that, that vertical that is created by the, uh, the handle. Because the handle is going to be a pretty strong handle. It's going to be, I'll, I'll say, you know, large scaled. Sometimes realizing that just me anyway, I'm going to come back and touch that up. I can do that. seen that episode of ER before. <laughs> trim the, the bottom uh, edge of this and you've got a problem. You've got a spout to deal with um, and I'm not even going to look for the trimming tool. I'm just going to take a bite out of that. The other thing is I don't have to have it centered and you don't have to have it centered. You've got this nice, clean edge, and, and this is probably one of those things where I feel like a left-handed person has an advantage. I'm letting my thumb ride on that edge. I'm letting my trimming tool ride on the thumb, and I'm trimming that bevel. And that's all I need to do. There is one other little thing I have a tendency to do. I am not opposed to looking at this and modifying. There's some throwing marks in there, and I want the liquid to flow smoothly to the spout. And I have no problem coming in and removing the rapids if they're there. Um, You know, when, when I talk about uh, the teapot in a few minutes, um, you know, I'll talk about that very specifically with one of the things that I, you really want to avoid is, is throwing marks on the inside of a teapot spout. It's like 
putting them rifling. All of a sudden in this little teeny space. This is a big picture and in this, you know, if I were in a conversation with you about mug handles or pitcher handles or teapot handles, uh, you want to think about the scale of the pot. You want to think about how you're picking it up. With a mug, you know, there, there's the issue of two fingers, three fingers, one fingered mugs. It's surprising how many um, people the people don't use mugs because the uh, you know, the handle just isn't comfortable to grab. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the void in my hand and I'm saying I get to fill that up with a handle. Uh, if you put a spindly narrow handle on it, you totally change the balance of, of the piece. You put a nice full handle on it, something really, really firm, strong, the pot ends up being much lighter, much better balance. So, um, when I first started making pots, my 